Hey there, Lammies. Today I'm going to read you guys a great story from the Bible about a lady named Ruth. Um, Ruth is one of my favorite people because she has a lot of faith in God and she's very kind to people who need kindness. And I think we can all learn a little something from her. All right, the story of Ruth, Unhappy Times. In the time when Israel was ruled by the judges, a man called Elimaic lived in Bethlehem with his wife Naomi and their two sons. So back in Bible times, a lot of the time there wasn't a president or a king, there were judges. And these judges were several people that ruled over the land. They made decisions, they made sure the laws were being followed. So it was kind of like having three or four presidents instead of just one. Does that make sense? One year, the harvest was so poor that Elamaic could not get enough food for his family. So they decided to leave Israel until the famine was over and go to live in the nearby country of Moab. While they were there, Elamaic died. And by this time, the two boys were old enough to look after Naomi. And when they married Moabite girls, they brought them home too. But not many years later, both sons died. Poor Naomi was left in a foreign land without a husband or family. But her daughters-in-law, Orpha and Ruth, were good, kind girls, and they comforted Naomi as much as they could. Soon Naomi felt homesick for Bethlehem. Remember, they lived in Bethlehem in the first place. She had heard that food was plentiful there once again, so she packed up all of her belongings into bundles, and the three of them set off for Bethlehem. When they came near to the border of Israel, Naomi stopped. You have been very good to me, but now it is time for you to go back to your own mothers. Both girls hugged and kissed Naomi. We'll come with you, they exclaimed. No, Naomi insisted. I can do nothing to help you or to make you happy, so go back now. So back in those days, it was traditional that the wife would leave her family, so her mom and dad, to go live with her husband. But if anything happened to her husband, she would go back and live with her family again to be taken care of. So that's kind of why Naomi is telling them to go. It's not because she doesn't love them. It's not because she doesn't want to be with them. It's because at the time, that was the tradition. That's what they did. Orpah kissed Naomi again, then reluctantly started the way back she had come. She went slowly, turning often to wave, for she loved her mother-in-law. Now, Ruth, Naomi said, you must do the same as Orpah. Please, let me stay with you, Ruth begged. I want to stay with you wherever you go. I will make your people my own and take your God for my God. Nothing will make me part from you except death. So this is a really cool moment in this story. Because of the great example I think that Naomi had on Ruth and how much love Naomi showed Ruth, it made Ruth want to know who God was and want to have a relationship with him. And that's kind of what she's saying. She's saying, I want to stay with you and I want to be a believer in your God like you are. When Naomi saw that Ruth had set her heart on going with her, she said no more. She was happy and comforted to have Ruth's love and companionship just when she needed it most. Ruth finds work. The townswoman of Bethlehem welcomed Naomi back, but they were so sorry to see her so poor and unhappy. So when... Naomi came back and everyone said, oh, Naomi, it's so good to see you. She said, don't call me Naomi anymore. Call me Mara. Naomi, that name has a really happy meaning while the name Mara has a really sad meaning. This represents how sad she was feeling. She was missing her husband. She was missing her son. She didn't have a penny to her name. So in that time, that was a way to represent how you were feeling. In those days, women could not earn a living and Naomi had no husband or sons to provide for her. But God had given the Israelites special laws so that they would help all those in need. Farmers must allow poor and hungry people to come into their harvest fields and pick up any stray stalks of grain that the reapers had dropped or overlooked. Okay, so what was going on in this time? Back then, unfortunately, women couldn't have jobs. They couldn't just go work at a grocery store like we can today and they couldn't just become teachers like they can today. So back then, it really relied on a husband or a father to take care of them. But Naomi and Ruth didn't have husbands or fathers to take care of them. So what these laws are saying was that because they didn't have anything, they could go and pick up spare grains and stuff that fell on the ground that the farmers dropped. When Naomi and Ruth arrived in Bethlehem, they were harvesting the barley. Let me go and glean barley. Ruth suggested. If I work hard, I can get enough for both of us to eat. So what the word glean means, it means she's just going to pick up spare stalks of barley that are dropped by the farmers. Ruth set out early and chose one field where the reapers were working, busily. She kept close to them all morning, picking up every stray grain she could see. At midday, Boaz, who owned the land, came to see how the harvest was going. Who is that girl gleaning over there? He asked, pointing to Ruth. 
She is the foreign girl from Moab, one of his men told him, Naomi's daughter-in-law. So let's pause for a second. Boaz, he's in charge of this entire field. These farmers that are picking up these grains, they work for him, so he's their boss. Boaz had heard about Ruth, for news travels fast in a small town. He went across to her. Keep near my reapers for the rest of the harvest, he said. I will see that they leave you in peace. When you are thirsty, drink from the water that my men have drawn. Now come and have dinner. Why are you so kind to me? Ruth said in surprise. I have heard about your kindness to Naomi, Boaz explained. May the God whom you have learned to trust keep you safe in his care. Without a word to Ruth, Boaz told his reapers to drop some barley stalks on purpose so that Ruth would have extra to take home. Naomi was delighted at Ruth's success. How did you get so much, she asked. I went to a field belonging to a man called Boaz, Ruth told her. He was very kind to me. How good God is, Naomi exclaimed. He guided you there. Boaz is a relative of our family. You'll be safe with him. Happy endings. While Ruth went gleaning each day, Naomi stayed at home. She thought hard. The harvest would soon be over. How would they manage then? Soon Naomi thought of a plan, and one day she said to Ruth, The harvest is all gathered, and tonight Boaz will be having his harvest supper. Once it is over, and he is all alone, you are to go to him. Ask him to protect and care for us because we are members of his family. Although Ruth felt a bit shy, she did exactly as Naomi told her. So back then, Ruth had to go through a specific way of getting Boaz's attention, of getting to talk to Boaz about this. So what she did was she probably put on her nicest dress that she had, got herself all ready, and then she had to go to where Boaz was sleeping. This would have been late at night. And instead of like nudging him to wake up, she had to sit at the very end of his cot, which would be almost like your guys' nap mats at school, and uncover his feet so they would get cold. And that would wake him up and alert him that she wanted to talk to him. I know, super bizarre, but that's what she had to do. Once he noticed his feet were cold and woke up, she could tell him what she needed to tell him. She knew that in Israel, God's law said that men in the family were to care for the widows. Boaz was delighted that Ruth had chosen to come to him for help. He listened carefully to what she had to say, then sent her home with a generous present of grain for Naomi. Naomi was satisfied. He is a good man, she said. He won't rest now until he has made plans to help us. Boaz wanted very much to marry Ruth, but there was another, even closer relative of Elamaic living in Bethlehem. He must be given first chance to help the two widows. Boaz waited by the town gate until the man came by. Then he asked if he wanted to look after Naomi and Ruth. It would mean buying back the land that had once belonged to Elamaic and marrying Ruth, but the man said no. Boaz gladly married Ruth himself, and took her back to his own farmhouse. Naomi was as excited as Ruth and Boaz when their first baby was born. All the women in Bethlehem who had come to comfort Naomi when she first arrived back came to see the new little grandson. They told Naomi how happy they were that God had brought her joy and prosperity through through Ruth, her loyal and loving daughter-in-law. Okay, Lammies, that was a really great story. I really love the story of Ruth because it really talks about having faith in God and being kind to people. Ruth was so kind to her mother-in-law, Naomi, and stayed with her no matter what. Actually, thinking about it, I don't know what Naomi would have done if she didn't have Ruth. She was an older woman, and having to go out and glean and pick up all that barley would have been really hard for her. So it was so great she had Ruth to go help her. And because of Ruth marrying Boaz, Naomi was now taken care of. So this is a really great story about showing kindness to others and loving your family no matter what. All right. Thank you, Lammies. I hope you enjoyed this story and I'll see you next time. Bye.